my hands adrenaline. I gotta keep my act together. At least for now. Goddamn rain. Hasn't stopped pouring. The zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Reporters. Already. Huh. They seem well informed. Video memo recording, Agent 47023, Nam and Jaden, Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. The time is 8.14 a.m. Unrelated to the investigation. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. Hey! You there! What are you doing? Lieutenant Blake? I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning, they told me to be here. Now if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, will you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? Some guy, taking his dog for a piss, found a body about 6 o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Any witnesses? None yet. <laughs> Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Do we know the cause of death? There are no marks on the body. Chances are he was drowned, like the others. Has the body been identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. There are a lot of people on the crime scene. Aren't you afraid your men might destroy some clues? You don't find proof sitting behind a desk. We're not in the habit of trampling things into the ground, even if we're not in the FBI. No. No, of course not. That's... that's not what I meant. Tony! I don't want to see a single shit-stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant! The 
case seems to be attracting the attention of the media. Yeah, a greedy pack of vultures. These guys have killed their mothers for a scoop. Some investigation. It's becoming a three-ring circus. I know investigators never like to see FBI profilers turning up, but I'm here to help. If I can. The only thing I'm interested in is finding the killer. I don't have an ego problem, if that's any reassurance. JD! Yeah, I'm coming. Do you have any leads? My men are going over to scene with a fine tooth comb. If the killer left anything behind, we'll find it. Listen, I I'm a little busy here. Why don't we discuss all this a little later, back at the office? Oh, well, no problem. I understand. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden, you come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Harry Kamek, sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Lousy weather, huh? Does it always rain like this? It rains every fall. Doesn't it do that where you come from? Well, yeah. Yeah, of course. Is that a coffee you're drinking there? There's some in the thermos behind you. Help yourself. When did they find the body? Excuse me, but... Who are you exactly? Nam and Jaden. FBI. If you want to ask questions, you should speak to Lieutenant Blake, sir. Pretty chilly, huh? There's a railroad track near where the body was left. Same as all the other victims. Strange character, that Blake. Didn't seem too pleased to see me. Way too many people here. They're trampling all over the crime scene. Orchid pollen. Something the killer couldn't control. Can we trace back to its source? The body is still here. Body is still here. Harry comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death.
The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. Very common. The pollen particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. Very common. Traces of blood on the railroad track. Analysis confirms it comes from the victim. Dead cat. The FBI doesn't keep files on dead cats. Not yet. Harry, comment, sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. I'm heading back to the office. You stay in... Yeah, I'm gonna have another look around if you don't mind. Take all the time you want. Footprints continue just after the pollen trail. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Harry comment. There are traces of blood on the fence behind the railroad line. It comes from the victim. The killer came this way with the body and probably grazed it on his way through the fence. Oh! 
There's a good chance that they're the killers. Gary, come in. Tire tracks on the side of the boat behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. I think I've seen all there is to see. I seen enough. Better get back to the station before I catch pneumonia. There's a good chance that they're the killers. A butterfly. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. 
However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? Have there been any cases of split personality developing after a concussion? Like people doing things but having no memory of what they've done. Like somebody else had been doing them. We know that in certain cases, a violent shock to the brain can cause serious psychological disturbances, like schizophrenia, for example. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. Do you want to eat something? How did things go at school today? I was punished because I didn't do my homework. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Sean used to love going to the park, laughing and messing around. Man, he was so happy. I'd like a packet of strawberry-flavored chewies, please. Thanks. Hey. I got you some chewies. I hate strawberry. Thanks. It was nice of you anyway. What am I going to do to cheer him up? I saw a boomerang in his bag. You used to be pretty good with one of those. Maybe you're right on the merry-go-round. We're just not communicating. It feels like we're drifting apart. Should've known he doesn't like strawberry. I don't even know my own son anymore. Sean looks so miserable. I wish I could help him. Just not sure I can right now. 
Maybe he'd like to have a turn on the swings. Sean used to love playing on the seesaw. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad, make me fly! <laughs> he seems to be having fun. It's been a long time since I've seen that smile. I'll find something else to do with him. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! Go on, Dad, as fast as you can! <laughs> Whoa, I think my head is spinning. <laughs> Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar.
Do you think it's going to take long? No, he should be finished soon. God, I'm bored. I hate having nothing to do. I gotta see Captain Perry. Orders are orders. Gee, I hate internal politics bullshit. Let's get the formalities out of the way so I can get back some real work. I could go for a little Larry time right about now. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no. Now it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get on well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. Huh. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're going to have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm, not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. I saw Blake when I arrived. Maybe I should go talk to him. I'll have a look around the station. Stretch my legs for a bit. Captain Perry is doing his press conference now. Might be interesting to have a look. I 
I should get Perry's assistant to show me my office. I can't wait to get to work. I'm dying of thirst. Where's the water cooler when you need one? Think I need a good cup of java. Strange character, Captain Perry. Seems to be more interested in meeting the press than investigating the crime. distinctions between victims based on their social class. It is true that the origami killer seems to choose his victims from the more impoverished parts of town. The higher crime rate in these areas makes the investigation more difficult. Time for a couple more. Yes. There are rumors that the FBI has sent a profiler to help with the investigation. Is that true? You seem to be well informed. Yes, we asked the FBI to send us a profiler to help us with this investigation. We were planning to announce this in the next few days, but it seems that won't be necessary. According to certain sources, the town hall has been applying pressure to avoid any mention of a serial killer in order not to have an adverse effect on the mayor's election campaign. Do you have anything to say about that? This investigation is starting to give me the creeps. Get a hold of yourself, man. The case is front page news in all the papers. It's not gonna be easy investigating the crime under the glare of all this publicity. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? 
This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. The killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. Hmm, a common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Just one origami store in town. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. 
No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand. An orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found. Which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geoprofiling any easier. Here we go again. I better go wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Five thirty, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. 
a brown coat, and a pair of pants. Brown pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... but it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks.
Inhalers are down at the far end of the store. Pity he didn't want to talk. Might have known something. Inhalers are down at the far end of the store. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. Hey, you! Come here! I said come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice! Don't panic, let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. You don't really want to shoot anybody, do you? I'm sure we can find a way out of this mess, right? Uh, my name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Do you have anyone you care for in your life? A, a girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name's Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself, what would happen to her if things go wrong? Now, I want you to put the gun back in your pocket and quietly walk out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have earned a second chance not to fuck up your life. What do you say? Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, this I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. 